for perfect sphere. As the equator, you have a north pole and a south pole. We're looking from the side. Here's the equator. Yeah, latitude at zero line versus year and a half. So we find up here at the poles. And high latitude is like 80 degrees or 70 degrees. I have a tiny little bit of Earth up here. Oh, huge amount of Earth right here. What I really need to determine whether something is in the northeast quadrant, the northwest quadrant, the southeast quadrant, the southwest quadrant, the southwest quadrant, is a bisecting line test for this. So that's what it looks like. What I'm really saying is if something is north, then it's going to be in this hemisphere. And if something is south, it's going to be in this hemisphere. Well, it's just my observation that the Earth is zero. How is that possible? Look, it's just a tremendous amount of slope of the north part in the southern hemisphere. Well, I imagine, if you will, if I'm sitting here, or here, let's say this is south, and this is north, and this is east, and this is west. Okay, I'm going to figure out east and west. I draw a line like this way. Let's say I have shot laser beams that can around the Earth from my fingers, and I line it perfectly with north and south. Let's go around and around it would mark this perfect set of hemispheres that I can divide it east and west. Now, if I did the same thing here, those laser beams would bend around the Earth, but they would do so in this fashion. They would start out like this, and then they would bend around the Earth and bisect it in half. And so even though the satellite sub point might be down here close, you know, it's clearly well below this line. The might be very far below that line, but it's still north relative to that bisection test. So that's exactly how we make that bisection test. That's the key. That's the key. And so north corresponds to the tangent of the latitude of the Earth's station, size of the cosine of the differences between longitudes of the satellite subpoint and the Earth's station. If that is less than the tangent of the latitude of the satellite subpoint, then you're going If you reverse this condition, then you are, quote unquote, south. And all of these tests will work out. This can be a maddening error when you actually go up and calculate things because the moment you pick up a, a satellite that's a lot of time near the equator, for low uh, satellite subpoints and low Earth stations that are close to the equator, this, this test, just testing the outright latitude lines, actually is a pretty good estimate of whether the satellite subpoint is north or south of the Earth's station. It gets a little bit hairy kind of around the equator, but if you want a sky track simulation, it almost looks perfect. But as things start to get higher and higher in latitude, you'll get these kind of quirky looking sky tracks where there'll be a little hitch in it. You can say, well, where did that come from? It's probably an incorrect code. It's not doing the northwest north south test correctly for the aspect calculation and adjustment. So just be able to look out for that. <laughs> okay. Now, this is how we need to do an example. on the top of Van Leer and figure out where to point it to get to a geostationary Earth orbit satellite. So here's a formal problem statement. Earth station in Atlanta on the roof of Van Leer, which we just said was 33.775 degree latitude and negative 84.3973 degrees longitude. We have a geostationary Earth orbit satellite that is hovering synchronous with a sidereal day, so that it never changes its satellite support latitude. It's always at negative 105.0 degrees. That's over 105 degrees less of Greenwich England. So, what are the look angles? That would be an azimuth at elevation. But this satellite on this earth station should dial up with an antenna to point it towards the satellite. Okay. So, for a couple of pieces of information, we'll need these physical constants RE, radius of the Earth, 6378 kilometers. The RS is the value that we calculated earlier in class. We said this is a geostationary Earth orbit, and then that's a circular orbit with a negative radius of 42,164 kilometers. And the satellite sub point is zero because it has to be zero. There can be no inclination for a geostationary Earth orbit satellite. And as we said, it always offers at the 105.0 degree longitude line. So, we're down to longitude, latitudes, and longitudes. We've got a radii. Let's see if we can calculate this. So, step one. And I'm going to put the formulas down in the form that I put it in and that I entered in the numbers on the calculator. I'll give you the results. We'll work through all the numerical details. You can double check it at home. It'll be a nice template for your own problems. Just to verify that your codes are running or that you set your formula in that lab correctly. Okay. Step one. Calculate gamma. Gamma is equal to arc cosine. Sine LS, sine LE, cosine LS, cosine LE, times the cosine of the difference between the longitude points. And if you do that for the numbers we got there, I've got my, all my longitudes and latitudes. This turns out to be 38.4 degrees. Remember, that's just the subtending angle that's formed between the center of the Earth, the Earth station, and satellite sub point. We still have as uh, elevation yet. To get that, that's step two. Calculate elevation. EL is equal to the arc cosine. Just massaging the formula that I gave you on the previous page to a slightly different form. 1 plus R E over R S minus squared minus 2 R E over R S not squared. That's the cosine of gamma. If I do that, I plug the numbers into the calculator where everything is calculated ahead of time. That's my gamma. R E over R S is from the problem statement. Or what we do what? Infer from the problem statement. That becomes uh, 44.9 degrees. It's about 45 degrees. So, that's actually a really good result. That tells me from the horizon how far do I have to jack up my antenna to point it so that it can see the satellite. Now I just gotta calculate as this. Let's go ahead. 
Step three, for that to calculate the helper variable alpha. The formula that I use alpha equals arc side, side absolute value, LEA minus LS, cosine capital LS over sine gamma. And you see this formula only depends on things that were given in the problem state that were inferred directly. We have all the information to calculate, calculate it. Difference in longitude, the latitude of the satellite subway, for the helper variable, variable gamma. This gives me 34.1 degrees. And then finally, I make my adjustment. For a simple calculation like this, this is actually pretty good. I have to make that adjustment. Give the satellite subway south, north, east, or west. Well, I didn't land, so this is an equatorial satellite subway. And the floor is pretty close to my side of the world because the geosphere is satellite serving North America, right? So, without doing any fancy math, you might say that, well, clearly the satellite subway is south. And if Atlanta is at minus 84, and the longitude is at minus 105, this is also about 20 degrees west of us, where we're standing right now, more or less, in longitude. And so I would say this is southwest. So, based on that,
Yes, of course. Let's not forget that. Let's, let's make it as accurate as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so here we are. And uh, we're the Russians. They're clearly over here. Now, about half a world away, right? Half a stereo day away. Now, what would the, the sky or the ground track of this orbit look like as it went over? Florida, Georgia, Arizona, Texas. It got a little dicey. Oh. 